So back in New Jersey, uh, you had a couple beers, uh, had some and more people come in to you know congratulate you and pump you up. Uh, and eventually a woman, a very large, very broad shouldered woman with a uh, kind of a sh- like short half crop and a, and a, and a Chelsea uh, hair, hair cup comes in uh, kind of very businesslike. She's wearing very like tough looking utilitarian clothes. Uh, she kind of finds her way to the back where you guys are hanging out. Uh, and like fist bumps with Garen and says like, yeah, I tried us, right? You need a ride? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going, uh, to this, uh, place in, uh, in ball, uh, not, uh, sorry, in Philly. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, stand up, uh, take a deep breath and then let it out. Cause I do not have time to do this gentle. Yeah, no, go ahead. And she, yeah, I'm she I'm like the rough. Uh, she like palms your chest and you fall backwards into a hole in reality. Uh, and you get sort of just deposited uh, into like one of the city parks in Philadelphia. It's very like sudden and jarring. Well, and then like the hole closes up behind you. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, that. Man, that's awesome. Okay, uh, he'll look at his phone and, and get like walking directions to this place. Yeah, the phone like freaks out for a little bit. Yeah, it's like what just happened? Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you get directions. Uh, you know, you're you're able to find a a, a good place that has like good good bakery that has uh, cream puffs and other uh, coffee and the like, uh, where you arrange to meet with uh with Circuit. Uh, uh, yeah, Circuit, you've been on the train for a couple of hours. You get let out in, uh, in the Philadelphia train station and similarly can find your way to the place on the phone. Um, okay. Um, she's going to take like a, a quick photo of herself to send it to him. Like, uh, I'm on, I'm here on the DL. So. <laughs> oh, Bob. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyway, it's not a freaky who is this real, really weird looking girl. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I look the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you head out of the train station, Nisha. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a car waiting for you. Ooh, fancy. Uh, it looks exactly like it looks just like an Uber driver, but it is there waiting for you. The driver like gets your attention and directs you into the car. Okay. She will hop in. Uh, I, I like just shows her phone with like the name of the bakery. Like I'm heading to this place. Patty's Bakery. Patty's Bakery. There you go. Patty's Bakery. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And uh, the driver just sort of very nonchalantly takes you where you need to go. Uh, about maybe a minute or so out from uh, where he's going to drop you off. He just says, all right, ma'am, we've got everything in place. Uh, you should have your standard communicator. Um, we have things. Uh, he says, if you just want to key in Spark, uh, that's your device, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and she'll kind of like shrug off her backpack and uh, open it up so she can get to his control panel. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he gives you a, like a, a secure key to, to plug in and says, this will wire you into our communications network. Okay. Great. Um, good luck. We'll be, uh, we'll be watching. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. And she'll back up and get out of the car and head into the bakery. Uh, yeah. Um, it's getting, you know, late at night, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of customers here. Uh, it's, you know, a weeknight, a weeknight at a, you know, city bakery. Uh, so, uh, it's not too hard to get a table that's a little out of the way, uh, and, you know, piles of cream puffs. Yes. Like mountains. <laughs> that I, I'm, I'm sure she sees the pile of cream puffs. So we'll just make her way over there. Yeah. That is an impressive amount of cream puffs. Well, I do owe you apology. So, uh, yeah, cream puffs. Yeah, All right. Well, 
apology accepted. Oh, cool. Well, you know, if you could tell me why you did it. Uh, yeah, someone from my group uh, was very curious about getting information from your unit. Um, and so my part to play was uh, making physical contact so they could copy and retrieve said information. Do I get a name? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to message no. him and be like, can I give your name? I mean, uh, there's if, like, if... <laughs> there's just a WTF. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I'm, I'm sorry. They prefer I, I don't. Um... Mm. Okay. That's fair. She'll grab a cream puff and then she'll also like napkin and kind of pull out a pencil and she's just going to She's just going to start doodling on the napkin. So, have you been? Okay, I guess. Uh, yeah, just working. That's fair. I, yeah. I think everybody's been working. I've heard it's gotten kind of tense lately. Yeah, I, I think the facade that everyone has been trying to carry on um, is starting to crumble. And now uh, we are at the precipice of change and that scares everyone. I mean, that's, that's a pretty scary thing. And uh, she's just gonna write on the napkin. They're listening, so be careful and, and just push that over to him. And she gets another cream puff. I need a larceny roll from you, Circuit. I'm so bad at this. It's good. <laughs> Secret agent circuit. Oh no, this is not what this character was made for. This is Austin Powers level awesome. It, it is. It's gonna be ridiculous. Okay, just larceny decks. Sure. Or just go the Assassin's Creed way of stealth missions uh, and murder the whole town. Yeah, there's that too. Mm -hmm. I think that's more more your gig. I'm not gonna <gasps> toes. Oh, really? One person. <laughs> One person. <laughs> uh, two successes. Uh, okay, noted. All right. Yeah, he's gonna look at it, put a cream puff in it, and eat it. Ah. So, um, I don't think I actually know your name. Um, I'm Gita, uh, by the way. My name? I mean, is, is it just Alterados? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for the most part. Um, I mean, that's what, that's what I wanted to be, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and my, my dad was really into the whole supers thing um my my mom called me something else so she she called me emilio oh yeah that's cool my 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 folks weren't weren't around too much to to really express approval or disapproval one way or the other yeah i always having to do that nine to five to five yeah. yeah, working to live, and our society is a tragedy in of itself. Gotta get that American dream. Yeah. Uh, sadly, everything America has touched is less of a dream and more of a hellscape. What it allows itself to do for the sake of financial gain. It, it is not in a great place, but it doesn't mean it can't be fixed. I, I definitely believe it can be fixed. Uh, it's my hope, at least. Yeah. Uh, Nisha, mm -hmm. why aren't you like ridiculously mad at me for what I did and for who I am? 
I was very surprised you wanted to meet, and I am still surprised you were being so nice. Well, I definitely wanted to know what happened with Spark, and I think I got a lot of that anger out in the moment. It's it, it's the first thing I ever made, um, and after, after erupting, and I'm very proud of it, and it's kind of like my my work in progress. Like I, I always tinker with it. So it's yeah. I yeah, I, I took it personal and as you should, it sounds like I, I'm sorry if if it wasn't necessary and, and if it didn't help a lot of people. Uh but it did. It was just a deal I made. Hmm. Oh, I mean, like I said, it's not finished, which is why it's not out there yet. Yeah. There's hey. still lots of bugs that I haven't quite figured out. But I did want to meet you. I mean, Schwartzchild told me he talked with you at Novacon. Didn't seem like a bad person. I figured we'd probably... I mean, probably should get to know people aside on the other end of that. Is it even a cultural divide? A philosophy divide? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, just curious, uh, if I asked for a algorithm and or percentage that the 1% from all over the world would have to give to ensure that people were taken care of, uh, in a humane way. Could you get me that number by the end of tonight? Uh, yeah, I could probably calculate that right now, roughly. That'd be amazing. She like shrugs her backpack and just kind of like raises an eyebrow and types it in. Is this have something to do with like your anarchist cookbook? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. I'm just saying, usually uh, you shouldn't be broadcasting about how you need a lot of fertilizer on Twitter. I'm, I'm just putting <laughs> that out there. Yeah. I'm not subtle. Um, it's never been my strong suit. So yeah, I, <laughs> uh, I'm trying. Uh, if you want to calculate that out, that'll be humanity's role. Sure. I believe in you. Something else about intelligence humanities? <laughs> sure. Yay. <laughs> Thank goodness for intelligence. You can do it. I can do it. That's three successes. Uh, three successes. Um, with your intellect scale. Um, yeah, you start thinking about that. Uh, that would be the first of uh, 25 milestones on solving world economics and, uh, oh, uh, and, 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 and uh, developing a solution for uh, income inequality. Uh, I just get like a rough number based on like, there's <laughs> roughly this many fucking trillionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we all I mean, have a deduction of like if we somehow manage to get every trillionaire to give 75 percent of whatever that's as good of a number as as anything that you can think of right now like it, it, like you're like oh this is a life's work mm. i mean i'm sure a nova of your caliber or uh, you know and, and who might you know who who trained themselves up in like economics and and other things might be able to like solve this pretty easily within a, a pretty time scale but you do not have a background in world economics it should like starts putting some numbers and scribbling on another napkin it's like ah this is this is so not what i do maybe 75 percent of every trillionaire okay it's a good starting point. I'm sure someone else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody who actually like took economics and maybe enjoyed it, like made it their life's work. Would that be better for that? I fucking hate it. 
<laughs> yeah, I I wish I I I, I focus on economics because it's more so than like political theory or anything like that. Um, but hey, if you know anyone uh, who focuses on that, uh, shoot them my way. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's somebody in Utopia who has to crunch all those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, so now what? I don't know. I've never done this before. We'll move uh, up into the air. Uh, as, uh, <laughs> and awkward. Yeah. As the VTOL is reaching uh, orbital levels, uh, you know, you guys are feeling like the force of gra- of uh, of acceleration and gravity uh, playing on your bodies. Um, uh, so Waterloo, you're you're staring out the window, getting a good look at the the horizon of the world. Absolutely, this is like this is the opportunity to enjoy this. She is absolutely going to take it. Uh, Rand, how are you handling this? Same sort of reaction, actually. Uh, looking out and really enjoying the fact that I'm back in or close to back in space again, mm-hmm. which was a huge thing for him. Um, and actually leans over to Water Lily and says. Virginia, wouldn't it be amazing if we could just leave this world completely and find somewhere out in the stars for us to be who we are? She doesn't know what to make about that for a moment, but finally it's like, I I mean, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I'm very interested in what's happening down here, though there's it's very i don't want to give up on it but i am interested in in the idea of you know what we can become as well it's i just you really think that there's literally no coexistence possible i look out to the stars and i think to myself that maybe the best thing for us is to just get away for a bit and figure out who we are as a people. And then if humanity is interested in reaching the same level or getting to the same place that we are at, once we've figured that out for ourselves, then sure. But so many people are looking down constantly and they never look up and they never search and they never try and find the next thing the the next for lack of a better term the final frontier (laughs) they're always looking down and i think i don't know i just think we need to look up more i get it you're a dreamer and i don't mean that like in a in a way without substance it's a lot of ideas come from initial dreams um i don't know i i'm i'm trying to find sort of my way my plan and it seems like everything's really mapped out but it's nice to hear other ideas yeah i just i don't know how we stay here and stay calm yeah but that's still avoidance So do we go into the fight when we know it's going to happen? Or do we turn around and walk away and say, hey, I don't want to have a fight. I'm not going in there. I'm not going into the gym. It's not worth it. And there is there is an apparent, you know, of the, you know, she definitely agrees with that idea of I don't want to do that either. And sort of rallies up with the, I, I don't, you can't make everybody leave. And if not everybody leaves, then there are people who are going to get hurt. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen either. And I don't intend to let it as much as I can. I, I can't do some of the things that 
really flashy or amazing Novas can do. Um, I don't really know all I can do, but I do know that people constantly surprise me. And I kind of would miss seeing where that goes. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, Miss Mercer, uh, who has been sitting in, in you know, present for this conversation, says, Yep. It's good to know is it's not just us uh, old timers who are asking the important questions. Um, I think she turns to you, Rant, and says, The things that you're wondering about, the things that you're trying to get your head around, that's a lot of the stuff that we try and do with Utopia. Yeah. You do. And you also do it by not to put too fine a point on it, acting like the world police. And who decided that you were the world police? That's a very good question. When you have the types of things that keep happening, uh, I mean, I can mention something that happened a few days ago, but I don't think that's a particular wound that we want to rub any salt on. Someone has to. But like I said, I don't know how productive that line of discussion would be at the moment, uh, but I do have to be a further party pooper. Uh, if you want to get a last look out the window, we're going to be closing the shields for reentry uh, and uh, not to put too fine a point on it because we don't necessarily want you knowing where we're landing. I right. assumed. <laughs> uh, so she gives you a moment to look out uh, and then the uh, shields on the windows close, uh, blocking your view from of the outside. Uh, and then you start to feel the feeling of descent uh, and gravity starts to affect you in an entirely different way. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, and you very quickly come down, uh, come down from the atmosphere uh, and land um, and um, when the doors open up, you are greeted with kind of this blast of, of dry, uh, much warmer air. Uh, and uh, clearly you're in a different climate uh, than what you left. Uh, and the uh, VTOL has sort of wheeled itself into a private hangar uh, where it, this is not, and this is not a public facility, you can tell. Like there's no like, the, uh, you know, there's, there's no uh, civilians or anything of like that. Like everyone's in uniform. Uh, you know, everyone has um, either you know uh, Project Utopia or Project uh, or or Aeon Society. I will mention uh, Rant. Uh, she has a, uh, a an Aeon Society pin on her lapel. Uh, she right. doesn't have any. She does not have anything uh, specifically calling her out of Project Utopia. Uh, and she says, uh, "We're here. Um, there's going to be some security checkpoints that we've got to go through." Uh, very standard, uh, and then we'll set up the meeting with uh, with Sluice. Please follow me. Right, let's go. Okay, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and there's there is a a very boring montage of bureaucracy and security uh, that that goes. Uh, you, you walk through some scanners. You uh, you know get uh, get some some biometrics. Um, uh, and you know, just not so, nothing so crude as a pat down because you get the, the sensation that their scanners can pick up pretty much anything that you might be concealing with you. Uh, and you are led into what appears to be a very high security. It doesn't have the air of a prison necessarily. It's more like a like an institution. Like it's more like a. Um, 
it, ha it, it has more of like a research and um, a re it has more of a research feel to it than it does have a, a, a prison feel to it, uh, like, a, like a clinic. Uh, but it is very reinforced. You know, there's no windows to the outside. You see evidence of like security and like building reinforcements everywhere you go. Um, and uh, she eventually leads you into kind of like a, a, a meeting briefing room and says, now that we're in the facility, I, I suppose I might uh, go over some details before we bring uh, Sluice in. Um, I, I take it that you, uh, you've you raised some questions regarding Sluice and his, uh, well, for lack of a better term, incarceration. Yes. Well, uh, I'll be as frank as I can uh, regarding that. Um, a good deal of the reason why he's been held and not brought to trial uh, has been a lot of back and forth between us and the US government. Um, they wanted to keep him in such a way that was not in keeping with um, the laws, but they were willing to put as many resources behind it as possible. It took quite some time for us to go through the United Nations and get him transferred into our custody, uh, where we have been trying to get him into a situation where we can go through the due, due process. But the US government is fighting us every step of the way. But yeah. that's not all there is to it. I, I understand that's not a that's not a pat answer that you might expect. Um, any questions or any statements you'd like to make regarding that? His crime, for if you want to call it that, really is something that they're going to attempt to legislate or or adjudicate. I don't even know what the right term would be for that. They essentially have the case that they've been trying to make is a combination of a conspiracy to commit assassination of a political of a political figure, uh, and essentially treating him as an enemy combatant. Right. So what you're leading me, or what you're trying to tell me, is that Utopia is actually trying to prevent that and help him out yes there is a, a complication in the matter um he is i'm trying not to sound um prejudicial but he is not a stable individual Okay, that's vague. He has moods where he's very cooperative, um, and he has moods where he has to be constrained for his protections and others. Sometimes he wants nothing more than to be cooperative and, and work with us uh, on the, the plan that we've worked out with him to try and get him out from under these charges. And other times he makes very, very violent statements and actions um, that complicate things. He also has some idea in his head sometimes that the Terrigen has left him out to dry, that they set him up as a, as a stalking horse, as a fall guy. Other times he is convinced that any day now some Terrigen hit squad is going to come and liberate him. It's, it's very hard to keep a consistent narrative about what he wants and where he wants to go with this. What do you want from him? Honestly. Honestly, I'd like to help him as best I can. I'd like to try and figure out what's going on with him mentally, and I'd like to help him get out from under these bullshit charges that the U.S. government is trying to levy against him. And 
I would like for him to leave this facility with a positive feeling towards Utopia and maybe serve as a bridge between our competing worldviews. How honest does this seem to Rant? Does this seem like she's on the level or is there some sort of subterfuge going on? Give me an empathy roll. I mean, if it helps any water lily that's kind of floored because she didn't know most of this. <laughs> I'm going to use intellect and empathy. Sure. Six successes. Nice. You get the sensation that she is very good at saying exactly what she wants to say. Um, you sort of just like pick up that sort of like very skilled uh, like orator and um, communicator um, that you don't doubt that she is fully capable of spinning any type of yarn that she might want to like you you read that on her but at the same time you don't it doesn't none none of the words that she's saying have any obvious signs of that being done right now got it uh so she very well might be talking circles around you because you can like read how skilled she is at this but in what she's saying right now you you don't you're not catching her in any like uh, like, like ticks or tells with what she's saying. You are saying exactly what I want to hear. And I'm not calling you out on that as anything other than a person that's capable of telling people exactly what they want to hear when they want to hear it to get a specific response from them. That is what it is. Indeed. Let's move on with this. Let's talk Certainly. with him. Absolutely. Uh, she like uh, she taps a button on her uh, on her earpiece and says, "Is he still in the community? Is he still stable? Is he still okay? Good. Um, let's have um, let's have some medication on standby in case that changes. Uh, we have some." guests here uh it's like all right he'll be brought in shortly right um this is before we uh we talk i just wanted to reiterate why we've brought you in uh it is because of his his fluctuating views and beliefs regarding the terrigen and he's He's been really wanting to talk to someone and I've worked with Water Lily on a couple of occasions and I trust her judgment. And so she put you forth as someone who would talk to him earnestly and do right by everyone involved. Yeah, I, I'm here because I believe that he needs to know that no one wants to hurt him least on our end of things all right i i am not here to tell you you know what to say to him he wants to talk to someone of the terrigen someone he can hopefully trust and we want to provide that to him as a way of showing our goodwill right uh all right uh the uh one of the doors uh obviously like heavy locks click uh and uh this a young man uh, he's African American, uh, about your ages. Um, he's uh, wearing kind of a very institutional um, uh, outfit. Uh, he sort of stumbles a little bit in. Uh, he's being led by a pair of guards. Um, it's very strange to look at him. He he pings the uncanny valley when you look at him because his skin is in kind of a transitional state between flesh and like ocean blue water. 
Uh, so like parts of him will become water temporarily and then shift. Uh, and there's a kind of like a current and a tide to it. So it's, it's almost, it's very disconcerting to just look at him because it's just clearly something not settled about his physical form. Uh, and they lead him in and lead him to a chair. Uh, he doesn't appear to be wearing any kind of constraints uh, or anything of that nature. He seems to be uh, completely unencumbered. Uh, but they lead him to a chair uh, and sit him down in front of you. And the guards, uh, one of the guards leaves, and one of the other one stays uh, and says, uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. Um, would you want to have this conversation by yourself? Or would you be okay with Water Lily being here? I think it's better if I talk to him by myself. Sorry, love. No offense intended. Okay. I mean, this is what you're here for. So I, a director, uh, she almost says director and then pauses. It's like, uh, Miss Mercer, can I, can I talk to you outside then, please? Certainly. Thank you. Uh, and we'll move back to Philadelphia, uh, back to the bakery. Uh, what is uh, the state of the conversation? So I've got a few questions, but let's start with the one. Why Philly? I mean, I, I don't mind getting out of the city. I, I'm hardly ever out of the city if it's not for like work, but why the city of brotherly love? Uh, I mean, I think the title says it. I, it's just, um, it seemed like a good middle point. Uh, so we're close that I, uh, yeah. And, you know, I feel like the major cities are uh, dealing with a lot of stuff right now. And yeah, I am just trying to be careful. That, that, that makes sense. I mean, there's a reason I'm not wearing the work uniform. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm surprised no one here recognizes me. Let's see, looks around. Yeah, there's not a lot of people around. Um, it's kind of weird. Hmm. Maybe it's quiet night. I mean, that's good. Oh, um, did uh, have you talked to uh, Sovereign? No, I haven't talked to a lot of people in the last couple days. Oh, yeah. I, I just want to make sure she was feeling better after the gunshot. She got thing. shot? Who sh yeah. Oh, gosh. You should you should talk to Rant. He was there, too. Oh. Um, but, yeah, some crazy, like, people just started shooting at her and it got her in the side. But oh. uh, she seemed stable when we left her. Like, she was being a medical attention Vaughn or not Vaughn uh, Rant was there and oh yeah Vaughn uh yeah um oh. would you do anything to harm me are you going to make me have to do anything to harm you no okay I don't go out intentionally plan on harming anybody, even stuck up snotty sovereigns. <sighs> it's just Gosh. looking around. It's kind of quiet. Did you want to go for a walk? Where do you think it'll, where do you think we'll end up after this walk? I don't know. I've never been to Philadelphia. I just, I'm confused about where this is going. Uh, and lines are being drawn in the sand, and I don't know where you're going to fit in all that. I mean, so on that note, why? Why the Terrigen? Why? You know, is it just because they were there at the moment, or is it honestly you're vibing with their beliefs on Nova supremacy and 
no chance for any kind of connection between humans and no i i feel like we're a part of humanity i'm with the terrigens because they back my plays plays that i feel will benefit all of humanity us included i also feel that there are superior terrigens there are people with the intellectual capacity to solve most of our problems but no one wants them to, and I want to give them the power to do so. So how do you want to do that? Whatever it takes. Uh, Circuit, you uh, have a, you feel your, your phone start to, to buzz with a pretty urgent message. So kind of nod down and hit her phone uh there's a uh, an image there's a um a message from basically your security detail uh that says um we're picking up um incoming uh non-hostile uh not sure exactly who it is but quantum readings are Spiking. Oh. Uh, Everything okay? Maybe. Um, it, incoming? <laughs> incoming well, what? As he gets up and looks around. I don't know. Uh, you get a, a text from uh, your security detail. It has an image attached to it. Uh, and there's a, a limousine. And there's like an image of a limousine, like one, like on a street, like one street away from where you are. Uh, Did you set this up so that you can get me? No, absolutely not. But there's a limo on the way with some huge power. I, I don't know. Who else? Did you tell anybody? I told someone so I can get here, but that's it. I told somebody so I could get here and I've tried to be very upfront about everything that I can be. He'll like get up and, and place his hands on your shoulders and, and like look you right in the eye. Are you sure you're not trying to kill me? I do not want to kill you. I don't Why want to not? kill anybody. Oh, okay. That's not how you solve problems. Okay. So through the through the glass of the the front of the bakery, uh, you guys both see like a, a very fancy, very like upscale, uh, like stretched uh, stretched Tummer style limousine uh, come around the bend and like just illegally park right in front of the bakery. Uh, and um, uh, a woman gets out from the back uh, and just sort of waltzes her way in um and when the two of you look at this woman uh you see uh each of you see the features and bearing and um aspects that you find most appealing and arousing Oh, it has horns. Oh, wow. Uh, and she, uh, this woman comes uh, straight through the bakery, uh, like not paying attention to any of the staff, just sort of walks her way right up to your table and says, Acherados, excellent, good. I was told you'd be here. Fantastic. I'm, I know we were supposed to meet in New York, uh, but I am a busy woman and I have some things to do. So we're going to get you taken care of. Uh, I don't think we've met. Hi, I'm Narcosis. Good to meet you. We're going to take care of your little problem. Absolutely. We're going to get you buttoned up and ready for your show debut. And she just sort of like, oh, whip turns over to you, uh, Nisha, and says, oh, and you have a friend. Yeah, hi. this is yeah. Uh, Nisha. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, do, do I need to go? I can't. Why would you need to go? You're 
your young circuit, right? Oh. Oh my. Like absolutely, it's great. No, it's fantastic. I love meeting new people. New novas are wonderful, especially all the types that have all the different various viewpoints and things. But no, we're going to be uh, having our young Atrados here have quite a glow up. And we're going to be getting him all ready to have his big announcement about his new plan for the state of the world. Um, it's going to be a fantastic little thing. We're going to have refreshments, parties, attendance. Have you ever been worshipped like a goddess circuit? Uh, I can make that happen for you. Uh, n- no, I, I, I she just keeps stammering. Uh. Uh. No, no thanks. Are you sure? Yeah, I I don't think Nisha has the not uh, co- worshiping. T- yeah, not she, she doesn't have the has the devotion to our cause to be swept oh, up. I don't this. give a shit about that. She doesn't have to be devoted to our cause. I just think that every young Nova should f- know what it feels like be adored by the like the radiant powerful creature that they are how do you know you don't like it unless you ever tried it that's what the opnet's for oh oh the opnet is a pale imitation of a room full of filled with people who just want a taste of what you are in person look i this sounds a lot like just vanity um I I am here and I want to do this so that we can enact some real change, not for... Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. I love changing the world. It's fantastic. But you have to package it right. And you have okay. to know within you that you are a glorious shining star. Otherwise, no one else is going to believe it. And no one else is going to believe you. I'll do my best. But honestly, it's hard to sleep sometimes. And uh, whatever. Uh, Nisha oh. is perfect the way she is. She's a smart and intelligent woman. Um, and I don't I think she needs that. the accolades of people for her confidence in herself to be validated. Oh, I don't know. I've seen your streams. You're quite the performer. I think there's a diva hiding in there. Oh. Sometimes, maybe. And do you think that uh, Utopia is ever going to let that diva out? Or is it just always going to be the good girl? It's like clearly very uncomfortable. I, sorry, Nisha. Um, Narcosis, uh, I, I think uh, whatever, I think our, our dinner, our cream puff dinner is about done. So we can, I guess, continue on to the next stage. It's a shame. It's a shame. I could do wonders with this. She just sort of motions up and down. She's already wonderful. I agree. (sighs) This is just what you do. You just, you're their media producer. You just go around to other people and glow them up so they suddenly get all the attention, all the likes, all the reshares. I mean, that's one aspect of it, yes. She's going to help us change the world. Absolutely, I am. There's lots of ways to change the world. This is the way we're going about it. And eyes need to be on the message. People can't ignore it. The complacent can't be allowed to continue as they are. Just because people aren't on your side doesn't mean they're complacent. Doesn't mean they're not trying to make their own changes from the other side. Yeah. I guess. I find them complacent because nothing changes. And I assure you, things will change with this. All right, well... I would love to take both of you to our uh, our little party glow up world changing revolution, but if it's just going to be Atorados, I do have to get going. Nisha, 
You're welcome to come. I'd like you to come, but it's, you know, you could do what you want, as, as always. Absolutely. Nova Freedom, it's what we're all about. Well, I don't have anywhere else to go. She just quickly checks her phone. Uh, there's a lot of like, um, uh, stand by, wait for, wait for, <laughs> for further orders. Uh, this is outside of mission parameters. Um, uh, uh, you and then the phone rings. Uh, She'll like put up a, a hand and then like step a few. Yes. Uh, and hear Melissa's voice and says, uh, that, that is a very high ranking Terrigen member. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't need to tell you that. Um, we can have the security details continue to follow you, but that is a very dangerous situation, but it is a potential intelligence gold mine. We, we, having your finger on the pulse of this might be make a great deal of difference. Okay, thanks. Well, I am uh, free to make my own choice. So sure, I guess let's see how this goes. Fantastic, lovely. Uh, I've rented out uh, part of the convention center. So we are getting everything set oh. up. We're going, okay. we're going to go over messaging. We're going over wardrobe. We're going over everything and fantastic. I love that you're coming with. This is going to be amazing. And she just sort of like, puts her arms like snakes her arms around your shoulders and her skin just feels electric and soft against yours and she just ushers you towards the window towards the limo so much blushing and she does take yeah. off the wig <laughs> oh okay. yeah let's do this <laughs> so you get into the limo and drive off uh elsewhere we um uh water Before. lily uh you are outside the interrogation room uh with uh, with miss mercer and she just kind of like takes a breath in says thank you for arranging this uh, i was not aware of almost 90 percent of what you said in there i you only referenced the the stalking horse and and concerns for his safety Yes, uh, I told you at the outset of this that there was a lot of complications for what was going on. You did. I, I didn't want, I don't want Rant to be put into a position that will harm him. We're not going to be putting him in a position, any kind of positions like that. Like I said, this is about showing goodwill to our guest. Do you really think the government has the ability to make that legislation stick in the face of the ludicrousness of it? It's not about legislation. I don't think there's any going to be any laws put on the books regarding this. I'm an American, and I believe in the ideals of our country, but... America has not been on a good path for a very long time. Agreed. There very reactionary elements in this in our in the US government and governments around the world. And we're trying to handle the tensions that rise around Nova's in a diplomatic and productive way but we have to fight our own our own allies as much as we have to do the people who we're completely opposed to you were listening on the plane i mean it was a small space is is that something that the society that utopia has even been looking at as well just getting all of us out of here It's one of our potential plans. We don't, we have to 
balance a lot of things. And there's so much good that Novas can do for this world, for, for humanity. But it is like threading a needle. There's so much tension on all sides. But the mission of Aeon and of Utopia has always been about, first and foremost, hope. And I don't think that trying to kick all of you off or usher all of you off into space is very hopeful. I think that's giving up. And I don't think that this fight is over yet. No, but he's not wrong. You can't make people who don't want to engage. You can't make them care about each other. You can try and mitigate harm, and that's absolutely what I'm here for. But if anything, my training, my powers have taught me is that we don't want to force people's minds into anything. So eventually that's going to come up. You're right. Conflict is inevitable, I think. I think that's a lot of people have foreseen conflict, but Aeon has not gotten where it is by giving in to inevitability, into despair, into worst case scenarios. Aeon functions by trying to get the most good out of every situation it can. That's what I believe. And I believe that there are many Novas who want to be members of this human community and use their abilities for the betterment of everyone. And honestly, if the ones who aren't interested in that want to leave, then more power to them. I won't stop them. But they make a lot of claims about Nova freedom, but not a lot about the Novas who want to use their powers and their influence up towards the good of all of humanity. That's the, the philosophical dis disagreement that's been at the heart of all of this for some time. Agreed. I, is there anything else I need to know right now about the situation? Is Rant safe in there? I believe so. We have, like I said, we have guards, we have facilities, and we have you. I see. All right. All right. Well, let's hope that he gets somewhere. And that's where we'll end it this week. Tune in next time to see where things go from here on Aberrant Atomic Youth. Don't forget to follow the characters on Twitter to see more of the story and follow Simulacra RPGs for updates on the show and the channel. If you'd like to support the show, you can subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels at Simulacra TV, but the best way is to go to patreon.com slash Simulacra Studios and become a patron. A big thanks to our $5 and up patrons. You keep the story going, and we couldn't do it without you. Until next time, remember, your legacy is our future.